Big dogs. We're out here in Miami. Um, let's say I don't know if this audio is going to work. I don't know if this video is working right now. I can't see anything when it's sunny out. But you can't have everything. You can get the background and you can just stare at us for the next 30 minutes. You get to see FB God live in person. from Live the, and direct. Yeah, rather than just from the nipples up. Yes, he is a, <laughs> he is a tall man. And uh, I am a lot shorter than him. So please save the comments. We got a little bit of everything from last night. The NFL draft gave us, what do we have, like 19 offensive players, 20 offensive yeah, players? Yeah, a whole lot of like cornerbacks though, which I wasn't expecting at first. Uh, yeah, a lot of them towards like, the end of the draft. Yeah, I mean, Eric we Stokes expected and all the, top, the top guys. We expected yeah. uh, JC Horn. We expected uh, Sertain. I know Animal was excited about the Sertain. The yeah, Broncos huge pick. fan of him. Didn't yeah. want Slater or Derisaw. I feel like they just attacked the position that they already had depth at. Like they signed multiple defensive players and they were just like, yeah, fuck I, Justin Fields. They went for everything Animal didn't want, yeah. which is what I liked. Which well, makes great content. Fantastic. We're here we to give it. you everything that you don't want as well. We're going to run through the first round of the NFL draft, basically pick by pick, fantasy player wise, talk about what it means for season long, talk about what it means for dynasty, favorite picks, uh, our least favorite picks. Snacks will continue to pretend that he likes the Katarius Tony to the New York Giants pick, but listen, Snacks works in mysterious ways. He's an RJ guy, okay? So anything he says, you basically can't believe him. He's uh, He lies when he tells the truth, and then he just lies the other 50% of the time. So whatever Snacks says on Twitter, don't believe in the Kadarius Tony pick was just absolutely uh, not a fan. The worst pick we're going right to see up. probably of the seven rounds. At least, yeah. I was hoping they would get like a quarterback to make a little controversy there. That'd be a fucking amazing. DJ controversy. They went with, it would have been beautiful. I only would want a quarterback going there if it was Mac Jones. Because then we could that just would... tweet at Snacks like, you finally got your quarterback, the Jones quarterback or whatever, right? Like, and you know he hasn't heard the 10 Mac commandments. So if he heard that and they got him, he would have lost his shit. Would have been rough. I would have loved to. I would have actually just sent them that like every single morning. I might be dead by now. If that was <laughs> he would have killed. He would have hired him <laughs> or came right down here. I start off uh, from the top. From the top, T. Law. Trevor Lawrence, one on one. I mean, we've known this pick since about 2016. And that's what got me upset because they showed the war room and they were so excited that they got him. Like Dude, you knew it was going to happen after like week what, that, four. That I can understand. Like the T. Law, that's like franchise altering kind of shit. But uh, the fact that they need to take the entire clock time really fucking pisses me off. I know we were ready for 8 o'clock. The pick was in at what, like 840? Pick was in at 840. It was, I mean, it was in at 840 four years ago, but happy for the Jags, I guess. The Jags, uh, we can just go with, actually, no, we'll wait till we get later on to the draft, but coming in, T-Law, uh, last year, I believe the Jags quarterback threw for like a combined 3,300 yards. So we're looking at zero statistics. We want to talk about DJ Chark. We want to talk about Visca having a little bit of a breakout year. Where are we at on those guys? Who do you like more? I, I want to say in our Dynasty ADP, uh, Chark was like six spots. I think end of the seventh round, Visco was mid-eighth. It's like it shouldn't move anything because we, we've known yeah. Trevor Lawrence is coming here. But who do you like more? I did a video about these two pretty recently, and I think it was more so Urban Meyer than anything. Just like he wants to be like kind of a, a gadget type of coach. And the fact that LaVisca Chenault can like line up in the backfield, which won't happen anymore because of Travis Etienne, which we'll talk about later. And, and Carlos Hyde. And Carlos Hyde, be a great pass duo. catcher. That, that one-two punch. Imagine keeping James Robinson in Dynasty. I know, imagine tweeting to like take him after saying Devon Zigbo was better. Bro, that was, I'm telling you, that was big brain shit. I know, you were I was, telling people to go with those Zigbo so they didn't get their hearts broken later. Seven months early, I was ahead of the game. The hair hides the big brain. <laughs> now, but I like LaVisca Chanel a little bit better because like as a rookie, what do you have, like 700 total yards? Yeah, something like 650, 700. Yeah, more opportunities than Chark and only one last game. And like Chark as a rookie was nowhere near what LaVisca was and like the situation was obviously different. But he's catching passes, or at least trying to, from like Mike Glennon, Jake Luton, and then the god Gardner Minshew. A couple goats. I still think goats. Gardner makes it a quarterback battle. I do too. Wouldn't I mean, be surprised if he's out there week one. Do they have the best hair duo in the league? Yeah, they're going to be taking a lot of sexy picks. I'd love that. I want to get in a few of those, but yeah, honestly, while we're down you'd here. fit in. I mean, you're, you're bigger than both. How, low, how, how tall is T-Low? He's like 6'6", six, 6'7". Six, six, okay, so, no he's not. He's not 6'7". Maybe not 6'7". I think he's like 6'6", six, six, though. Stop. You're, you're starting to get used to like exaggerating heights now. Yeah, because Animal's just like hyping me up. Yeah. We will have a uh, live stream footage of, of round two, by the way. Round two and three later tonight. So if you're watching this in a couple hours, we'll be hanging out. I don't know why we're here. We don't deserve to be here. <laughs> you don't deserve to hang out with us either. So listen, we're a bunch of undeserved peasants. But we, uh, we thank you for joining us. If you want to hang out for tonight, We'll be doing round fucking four through seven as well tomorrow. It's all good. Just hang out for the draft, all right? And uh, yeah, I, I, uh, I think Urban Meyer going back to his Ohio State days and whatever, like, he was always really good with the gadget players. Yeah, Percy uh, which, Harvin of Florida, too. Percy Harvin, I think of like Curtis Sam. Urban Meyer was coaching Curtis Sam. Curtis right? Sam, I think, was he there with Paris Campbell? 
probably. I think he might have been. Might have to fact check, big nah. fact check us on that. But yeah, he's, he's been nice with the gadget players. I really want to see Chark for a full healthy season. I feel like what he had going on with the injury last year was yeah. like kind of fucked up after the breakout the year before that. I feel like DJ Chark still got the same upside we looked at coming into last year. Do you think the volume hurts a little bit with Marvin Jones there? They yeah, they're like a very a similar, similar, very similar player. Uh, it's really hard to buy into either of them for redraft, to be mm -hmm. honest with you. Uh, Dynasty, obviously, they're just very different roles, what they're going to play Visca and DJ Chark going forward. So I like, uh, honestly, I think I would take Chark over Visca. It's going to be close either way, though. They're probably like mid 30s, mid to low 30s. In your I rankings. would, uh, I would probably diversify. If I'm doing like six startups, I would mm -hmm. probably take one of each. Look, here's the thing: if T Law pops off, if T Law hits, which we probably expect him to, like one of those wide receivers is going to be a huge dynasty asset. In well, there's a years. source that we have inside that said T Law is a bust, and he also broke the news that Aaron Rodgers is a Bronco. I think I was, I think I was the source that said T Law is a bust. Then we have two sources. Guaranteed. If you have two sources, you have no sources. So it's like, it's like the Jags have two quarterbacks, so they got no <laughs> quarterbacks. All right, T-Law, easy one-on-one, -on -one, super flex rookie drafts. Move on to pick number two. Zach Wilson came in. I still don't understand how he was such a heavy, he, like minus 5,000 to go number two, and it's been like that for weeks. Yeah, I don't know how, it, like, like you said, like I don't know how that was like so set in stone. I feel like the one thing that he's good at is like running out of the pocket, which is like going to work well because they don't have a pocket for him to even run out of now. I just, for like for fantasy, what's the upside there? The problem is like his like the entire Jets offense is going to be in rebuild mode for like half of his rookie contract, you know. So it's not yeah. like you're, you're not going to feel comfortable starting him in a super flex league year one. Maybe ne like we need Denzel Mims to hit. We need like Corey Davis to play like he did in Tennessee. Like I don't know. There's just a lot working against him right now where his ceiling feels extremely capped. And I don't know. He the problem with Zach Wilson is like he looks flashy and nice, but he literally didn't play any good competition in college. And in order to hate. His headband said, any team, any place, anywhere. And when they try to schedule against a good team, they're like, nah, it's going to hurt my draft stock. I wonder if the Jets, uh, I wonder they if the them. Jets, yeah. Just like, we want them. good film. Yeah, we want good film. He's like, I don't have any. <laughs> any time, any place. But, yeah, Zach Wilson, listen, he goes to the Jets, but based on the other quarterback landing spots, like, he slips down probably like my quarterback four. We'll get into the rankings probably at the end of it. Move on to three who was Trey, Trey Lance, Lance Sanford. This was, the whole world had their breath fucking waiting on this pick. That was crazy. Tony almost like, I don't think he even watched the pick. I'm gonna like be honest in. with you, I think the Niners had Mac Jones at number three, and then they heard your rap, and then they're like, we can't do it. Like this the, rap the, the like, media storm is gonna be worse than the Colin Kaepernick shit. We, we can't deal with this <laughs> 10 Mac commandments bullshit in our locker room. The butterfly effect was like unreal. <laughs> I wish it never posted it. Yeah, it's as long as your hair over there. So Trey Lance goes to San Fran at number three. Uh, Jimmy G, all the rumors are that he was probably going to move to the Patriots. I mean, it's still very much a possibility. I don't think, like, the Pats were looking to give up their fucking first-round pick for Jimmy G. So, like, mm -hmm. this could happen on day two. It could happen on day three. It can happen in two months. But Jimmy G might be there. Uh, I don't think uh, Trey Lance is, is going to be sitting out for too long. He is one of the more raw prospects. I would have liked to see to go to the Patriots because they have Cam Newton, a very similar player. They got the system going for him already. Uh, but Trey Lance, I mean, listen, you can't go to a team with much better weapons from the rip. That's what I'm saying. Like, he's so raw. But worst case scenario, he just dumps it off two yards down the field to like one of the three playmakers and they just do whatever they have to do after the catch. And like his rushing ability paired with just the yards after catch receivers that he has, like his floor is so high. Even if he doesn't play this year, I think like you asked me on stream, where would I pick him knowing he doesn't play this year, like hypothetically? I still think like 105, 106 because we saw what he can, like what Jalen Hurts did in a worse situation. And in like hindsight, you would take him first half of the first yeah, round. Yeah, I, I think like 105 would probably be almost the Eh, maybe not. The, yeah, probably 105, 106 there, based yeah. on the other guys. But Trey Lance, uh, I'm, 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 I'm kind of like, I don't know if I love this for the weapons there. Yeah, cause there's not, I mean, not that they were a pass-heavy offense to begin with. They were always, like, run-heavy, and they yeah. had, like, their scheme. I think, like, any quarterback can probably fit in there and do what they need to do because they're a yak offense with Kittle and, uh, and Debo and Ayuk. Debo should be fine because his average at the target's like fucking negative two yeah, yards, negative right? Five, yeah, negative five, Just screen plays on screen plays. Kittle's like, he's not always like deep shots. It's more like over the middle, kind of like rifles yeah. and let him do his work afterwards. Ayuk seems to be like the more downfield guy, which is kind of surprising because he's so good yak. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I guess it doesn't change much for me because, listen, it can't like, can't get any more like nominal than Jimmy G. Yeah, the thing is like, sure, Trey Lance might take time to develop, but like last year, Ayuk was catching passes from three quarterbacks as well, and yeah. he was perfectly fine. So yeah, just like the Jags, like there was so much up in the air last year and all their weapons, at least like Chark didn't do too much, but like everybody else kind of showed out that like the situation can't get much worse, which is why I'm pretty high on all of them still. Yeah, so Trey Lance, uh, definitely in the 105, 106, mid first round range. I mean, going back to 2019, 1,400 rushing yards, 10 touchdowns, like he's gonna be a fantasy stud, which is, uh, this, this class was just, 
amazing from a quarterback situation. At least if people dropped where, like even like Mac Jones would be, you could get excited if he was in San Fran, mm -hmm. but him dropping to New England's fucking questionable. We'll, we'll, we'll get there after we talk about number four pick, Kyle Pitts to Atlanta. Big Kyle Pitts guy now. You are? Gotta, gotta be a big Kyle Pitts guy. Wide now. receiver one? Uh, no. He would be my, well, here's the thing. He goes to Atlanta and now he's basically our best offensive lineman. We keep wasting first round picks on off. I thought we were going to we go. We have Hayden school. Hurst still. Hayden Hurst. We got two really good blockers just on yeah. the very. Set out. the edge, Mike Davis off tackle. That's why, yeah, that's why Gurley couldn't succeed because they kept shoving him up the middle. Had they let him use his elite speed, speed to the outside and, and let Hayden Hurst <laughs> block the shit out of him, they would have been, it would have been money. They would have been fucking ripe there. So Kyle Pitts goes there. Uh, this offense, man, I don't really know what to think because Julio is going to be gone sooner rather than later. I'd imagine maybe he plays out 2021. Maybe he doesn't play out 2021 with all the post June 1st cut bullshit going out there right now. Uh, and he becomes a secondary weapon, but we don't know who the quarterback's going to be with him. We assume it's Matt Ryan for the next, hopefully, two years, but the offense can change quickly. They also bring in, like, Arthur Smith, yeah. who uh, I'm not going to be like, oh, he targets tight ends or whatever the fuck the case may be, but he is a much more balanced or run-heavy guy. They do a lot of play action, which I do like overall, but I think people have gotten used to the last three years with Dirk Cutter, who passes the ball at, like, a 68%, 70% yeah. rate. So we're like, we just assume that Calvin Ridley and Julio are going to get the 130, 150 targets. It's going to be a lot, a lot run heavier of an offense going forward. And I don't know if we see necessarily statistics out of Kyle Pitts until at least like Julio's gone. Yeah, that's tough too. Like if Kyle Pitts doesn't hit as the fourth overall pick, like at what point do teams in real life ever consider a tight end again in yeah, the first round? I mean, for, uh, earliest tight end ever drafted, number four overall. Like, are you even, are you taking, uh, you're high on pits for yeah. fantasy purposes. Like, you talk about the rookie drafts, and I'm someone who's kind of consistently been taking pits, if I am at all, 110 to, like, 201 range, which he's not going to drop there for mm -hmm. me ever. Tight end premium, uh, I think Mike, like, put this pretty well. It's like tight end premium does not make tight ends more valuable. Just all it elite. does, yeah, it just gives the ones that are catching a lot of balls and getting a lot of targets a bigger advantage versus the other ones. Same way in, like, uh, court, like quarterbacks, you, you change the rankings when the quarterback stats change, but you don't actually change the value of the quarterback position. If it's four point per passing touchdown, you're going to value rushing quarterbacks more. If it's six point per passing touchdown, you're going to value guys who pass the ball a little bit fucking more. Same thing with Kyle Pitts, tight end premium. So that being said, tight end premium, like Trey Lance, Kyle Pitts. I'm, I'm still going Trey Lance. I think even it's the right like, choice. Like Would have thrown you into the fucking ocean, put you in the bottom of the river. Yeah, right next Cinder to blocking. Animal and Tony, yeah. <laughs> sleeping with the fishes. But like you said, like they bring in Arthur Smith. He wants to run more. Their defense looked better down the stretch once they fired. Who was their coach before? Was Danny it? Quinn. Danny Quinn, goat. Fire him. Their defense gets better, and they have Calvin Ridley, Julio Jones, Hayden Hurst. Like stinks, but at least he's still there. He's got like hands. The volume isn't going to be there for him to be an elite tight end right off the bat. So like tight end premium, like you're not picking a guy this high like Kyle Pitts, hoping he like puts up 1,200 yards as a rookie. Be, like hope down the line they do but if they just change their identity it's gonna be tough to like rationalize seeing him getting 120 targets in a season yeah so i mean yeah, a tough. couple years down the line it's just like you're not going to get any value squeeze but if you're going to look at it the same way that you look at trey lance where you're like you know in a year hopefully we get the value yeah. then pits a year down the line could be you know he'll probably be drafted let's say let's talk about like startup dynasty right now kyle pitts will probably go i mean here's the thing like Kelsey and Kittle almost go in like the third round, the end of the third round, mm -hmm. I feel like in most startup drafts, 12 teamers. Tight end premium, you'll see probably Kittle go maybe like 20, 24 range or something like that. I feel like Kyle Pitts is going to sneak into Fifth. early fourth round range. You think so? I do, yeah. At that price, that's tough because like Waller at that point is going to be back to back and I would just, I'd rather take Waller yeah. 100%. Uh, yeah, I, I would, I would, uh, I don't know, dude. I actually, I feel like Kyle Pitts is like so exciting that like a dynasty startup, I'm like, yeah, let me yeah, you get too hyped now. up. But in a rookie draft, I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. That's like a dumb way to look at it. But for yeah. some reason, like the startup dying because you have room for error where you can go youth in a startup draft. You can go youth with Kyle Pitts and still get like a veteran tight end mm -hmm. later in the draft that could do it. But in a rookie draft, you're just picking up. It's like free agency. You're just picking up prospects. and You don't have the chance to like recoup what you lost on depth versus or uh, veteran versus like fresh. Yeah, there's always that discrepancy too. Like in a startup draft, you're always going to take like ETN over Jamar Chase, but in a rookie draft, you're like, oh, maybe I'll take Chase over ETN. It just like doesn't add up. 
that's fantasy football. Nothing ever makes sense. That's yeah, nothing makes sense. Nothing we've said so far, I feel like, makes sense. We are at uh, the Bengals pick, which also didn't make sense. Jamar, Jamar Chase. Chase they added a weapon. I'm assuming this is to make Joe Burrow happy. There were reports that uh, supposedly Joe Burrow called Jamar Chase yeah, and was like, pack your bags. Yeah. We have multiple sources, including myself, <laughs> that, uh, that confirmed this report. So Burrow uh, told Chase the morning of the draft, pack your bags, you're coming to Cincy. Chase goes over there. Like I said in my video a couple of days ago, I think it's a buying opportunity for both Chase and Higgins because people are going to play the same thing where it's like, they're eating into each other's targets. Like, we could have multiple top 15, top 12 wide receivers on the same team. We've seen it yeah. multiple times. I feel like this is kind of like a lesser Cowboys where you can have, like, three somewhat fantasy viable receivers because Joe Mixon, as we all know, is he stinks. Their defense over there is terrible, and they don't have an offensive line that can help Joe Mixon run. They're not going to be playing from ahead a lot. They're going to be throwing the ball a ton. If Joe Burrow is healthy, he's going to be able to pepper these guys. I wouldn't be surprised. Year one, all three guys have 100 targets. I think they're going to go, like, very, very – heavy on the spread offense. I remember seeing something where they were talking about Burrow's like really comfortable in the four and five wide receiver yeah. sets. And uh, that's why he loved playing with Joe, Bur uh, Joe Brady. And uh, and that's why it works so well at LSU. So if they just keep throwing weapons out there, if they keep going, you know, Boyd in the slot, they go Chase and Higgins on the outside. They got Auden Tate too, so they can even move Higgins or Chase into the slot and let like Auden Tate run on the outside with the other one. Yeah, it could be it could be a, a fun offense because the volume will be there because they're going to be trailing so fucking yeah. much. Do you think that they put like out in the media, when they put the, the picture of Joe Burrow's knee, do you think they did that on purpose so people thought they were going Penny Sewell? Uh, like, look at this guy's knee, it's fucked up, we need some help. No, they definitely, like, didn't. I didn't feel even like think about the it. social media teams for NFL social media teams are, like, the most oblivious, like, yeah. the most oblivious work teams mm -hmm. of any industry in the world. Yeah. His knee looked like it had, like, a zipper going up it. Yeah. It's like, yeah, we're going to get a wide receiver to help. Yeah. Nothing. It was bad. Yeah, the memes that came out of that were really good, though. Yeah. Fallish type shit. Yeah, I mean, they pass on Sewell, which is probably going to end up being a mistake. But listen, Chase is a fucking animal. Uh, in a startup draft, who are you taking, Chase or Higgins? It's got to be Chase, right? I'm I'm a pretty big fan of Higgins because he kind of buried me last year. So I have to, like, completely revamp don't, my don't take. Don't go too far down the spectrum. Don't, don't fuck with your head. Don't now be like, because I fucked up on Higgins, I can't fuck up again. So I got to I, I make up for my insecurities. Yeah, don't be doing that shit. I'm going Higgins. You learn, you're got an idiot. To. No, it's got to be Chase over Higgins. For redraft this year, take Higgins over Chase because he's got the rapport already. He'll probably be a red zone monster. Even though Burrow and Chase, man, 20 fucking touchdowns in 2019. Yeah. Like, that was a silly, silly combination. So, I mean, they're both good picks. I think both of them present a buying opportunity. I think... Uh, I think Chase will still be a very highly touted prospect, so I don't think his value falls off. I think Higgins' value is going to drop like pretty far in drafts, and that's yeah. when you fucking pounce on that shit. And the thing about like Tyler Boyd too, he's always just like a ninth round pick, no matter what would have happened in this draft. Like he's just going to always stay in the ninth round, and I'm like, I'll still buy at that price. I'm a little less excited about him just because he's like a volume play. You know, he's like the guy yeah. that's when the backup quarterback comes in, he's getting like 12 targets, turning into like 84 yards. He ain't getting the 12 targets anymore. Yeah. That's a problem. I'll just like... He's going to be like 8 for 55 every game. He's going to be like Jarvis Landry until he's like 34 years old. Yeah, that's about... Yeah, that's a good comp, I think. I think he'll put up like Jarvis Landry numbers for a while, but like that passing offense, he is now the third option, maybe the fourth option. If... Uh, who, who else do they even have on that fucking offense? Who's their tight end? Tate. They don't, I don't think they have a tight end. They just got Drew rid of Drew Sample. All stud. together. Drew Sample, GOAT. CJ yeah. Azuma, GOAT. Yeah. They have a ACL. lot of GOAT tight ends, actually. So they I, got I, rid I of uh, Tyler Boyd is like the wide receiver six now. Well, Gio from, uh, Bernard is gone. So yeah, he's gone. That's, that's like 100 huge. targets off the board. Yeah, unfortunate. Yeah. But that leaves a lot of opportunity for Joe Mixon. Not that Chase doesn't affect Joe Mixon. So we will move on to pick number Jalen Waddle. Jalen Waddle. Interesting, interesting pick. You saw Preston Williams put out the, the zipper yeah. mouth emoji this morning. I mean, Preston Williams, fan. what the fuck do you expect? <laughs> like, you had like a four game sample size, which you were like pretty good, and it is only relatively good because it was against Devontae Parker, his numbers. Now, Jalen Waddle comes in. And it's interesting because they signed Will Fuller. It's a one year deal. Fuller's going to miss, I think, the first game with yeah, the suspension just this year. Um, very similar players. Waddle's obviously got electric, electric speed. Uh, what did Will Fuller run in the 40? 439 official? I think around there, yeah, because the the weight adjuster was real low because he's like he was light, but just raw. Yeah, I think it must have been like low fours, low four four, and like high low four three, four, like four zero four four. Yeah. Oh, my iPhone's about to burst. Yeah, it's probably gonna pop. I'm being too hot. I don't even know if this camera's still on. Let me check. Yeah, we good. Oh, we Gucci. It's high Content's quality still equipment. Going. All right, so uh, yeah, I'm curious because everyone's gonna be like Jalen Waddle is game breaking speed. I'm like, 
official 40 time, he's probably not that much faster than Will Fuller. Like, you yeah. can't get that much faster than 4.38 or whatever. I feel like right. last year, though, Will Fuller kind of, like, transitioned his game. He definitely looked bigger, and he was more of just, like, an alpha more than, like, a field stretcher. He had to turn into a project, like, the number one that yeah. he had to. I didn't think he could do that, but he'll... This, I mean, listen, they're giving Tua everything that he could possibly handle to work with, and now they got Parker, who doesn't need to be the wide receiver one there anymore. It's, like, it's just a spread fucking offense where it's... Uh, Parker, Gasicki, Waddle, full. That's a that's a pretty damn yeah. good uh, pass catching group. It stinks that Tua can only throw to two of them because they run out of the slot. He can't, yeah, you can't. Yeah, reach Will Fuller. Ones, so what a waste for Fuller and uh, Waddle. I know. It's gonna be a lot of good highlights cut Tough up. Tough scene. You think he's gonna game. run out of the slot though, Jalen Waddle? Yeah, I, I feel like they've already talked about that. Will, I mean, Will Fuller proved he can run on the outside. Devontae mm-hmm. Parker's obviously not a slot guy. So Gasicki, Gasicki ran the second most uh, slot routes of any tight end last year. So it's gonna be Gasicki and it's probably gonna be Waddle, which makes me like that a lot because Waddle's a guy who like. Uh, he is a great deep threat, but it's almost like Henry Ruggs last year where they kept trying to push him deep instead mm-hmm. of using him by the line of scrimmage. And Waddle's a dude who could take a slant fucking 80 yards to the crib. So he might, he might be actually like really electric in Miami. You know who must love this pick is Mike. He hates Kasicki and he loves Waddle. Yeah. Just kill one, the other one gets propped up. Yeah, Mike's got to love this slant. Gotta be huge. I mean, Jalen Waddle was, was like his guy. Waddle, I mean, dude, Waddle went one pick behind uh, Jamar Chase. I think Jack's bold prediction yesterday was Chase was not the first wide receiver picked off the board and if it wasn't Chase it was going to be Waddle yeah. but I mean Waddle goes to Miami we're in Miami destiny yeah wide receiver one Waddle Waddle 101 wide receiver one I mean gotta be all right so Waddle six seven was uh who's the next offensive player skill player probably Devonta Smith right no there's no quarterback someone, someone at nine no who's number seven pick Detroit they took Sewell Sewell yeah eight was oh Panthers they Panthers. took J.C. Horn. J.C. Horn. Sertan. Nine was, yeah, Broncos. And then Eagles Sertan. traded up for Devonta Smith. Yeah, so Eagle, that, that was that was craziness because it was the Cowboys, the Giants, the Eagles. And uh, you knew both of the, I think the other NFC East teams wanted Devonta Smith. Mm-hmm. Eagles jumped the Giants to take the Dallas pick. I honestly feel like Dallas is like, yo, they gave them that pick because they're like, you guys fucking stink. If we yeah. give this pick to the Giants, they might have a good team. If we give it to the Eagles, you guys are still like four years away from rebuilding to to being a good team right now. So they give it to the Philly, to Philly. They take them out to Smith. And it's a weird situation, bro, because like, I wanted to like Demonte Smith again. I wanted him to land somewhere where, where everyone could be like, we don't like him because he was a late breakout or whatever the bullshit was. And I could be like, nah, he's like still a good route runner because Matt Harmon's reception perception, easily the best like separator in the class. And I think, you know, we've seen it with guys like Diggs, with Calvin Ridley. Like, you don't have to be an early breakout. You don't have to be uh, a monster producer at the college level, even though Demonte Smith was, so he has that. People, people are always like, oh, he's an outlier if he hits. It's like, but his college stats were already yeah. an outlier, so he's, he's already an outlier. Yeah, he's already really good. So he's like, he already hit that mark being 165 pounds and putting up like, what, 1,800 yards and whatever he did this year. It's like, it's ridiculous. But do you but hold n- any weight in like Philly taking a wide receiver for like six straight years and none of them hitting from like I mean, Jordan I think Matthews. you have to. Like, there, is there, there's no worse team at scouting wide receivers and then drafting them, I feel like. Yeah. Like they, I mean, they just miss and then they miss. Jordan Matthews, Aguilar, like Arcega White. Playing Pong. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and it's just like the people they draft over. Like, we're going to look back and whoever, it's going to be like, oh, remember when they took uh, Devonta Smith over Rashad Bateman? Yeah. Or like Devonta Smith over Kadarius Tony. Like, what an easy layup we, yeah. we would have seen three what years ago. What a great ago. pick they made. He goes there and now it's like, okay, similar play style to, eh, no, nah, I'm not going to say Jalen Rager, but this like Barry I think Jalen Rager. Rager has a play style. Yeah. <laughs> he just like runs straight and then into the bench. His play style is just exercise. Yeah. It's exercise <laughs> on the field. He doesn't, all right, so Rager, like, I don't, I think we came to the conclusion that he was never really going to be an alpha on the NFL mm-hmm. field. Devontae Smith, I still think has that chance to do it, but now it's just like they have a bunch of little fast little twitchy weapons running around and Jalen Hurts is their quarterback who's going to take 12 to 15 rushing attempts per game. Uh, so I don't know, dude. I'm not. I'm not expecting a lot of production from Devonta Smith. Did them two get to play together at Alabama? Yeah, they did. They did. There's a uh, three duos now. It's Tua, Tua and, and Waddle. Waddle, Mac Jones, and maybe that was a lie. But then those two, Jalen right. Hurts, and no, yeah. I think that was wrong. Yeah, big but wrong. We're not here for the big facts. Fact check. Yeah, again, all f- all fake news today. Jalen Waddle, Tua. Even though Waddle said he'd rather play with Mac Jones than that's Tua. tough too. When he got picked, like he didn't hug his family and he looked pissed off too. Like. How are you going to be pissed off on Miami, though? I know. And, like, that high of a pick, like, he's going to get five years on his deal, a lot of money, and he's just... You remember when, like, first, like, top ten picks used to get just, like, 30 mil guaranteed, no matter... I remember they, like, lowered what the guaranteed pay had to be. Yeah. Remember, like, every first overall quarterback, second overall quarterback, got, like, 40 mil floor guaranteed. Ryan Leaf. Ryan Leaf. Go. Rich, rich man. We're in Ryan Leaf's house right now, actually. He's a good guy. Not a good, not a good quarterback, but a good guy. Is Nine, that it for Devonta Smith? Where do you have... You have 
All right, so Waddle basically, over him, right? Easy. I'm going to take Waddle over Devonta Smith. That's where I'm at, too. For sure. Um, and then we have Chase is obviously the one. Redraft, any interest in it, any of these guys? I like Waddle a little bit because I feel like they're imaginative enough to like get him the ball in space and see what he can do. I again like Jamar Chase is probably gonna be the one there of like all the guys in redraft. Devonta Smith, I feel like I just want to stay away because I feel like in casual leagues too, he's the one guy that like everybody knows. Where do you they're think gonna Smith go is gonna him. go now in drafts? Like you still think there are gonna be people that are like Devonta Smith is a fucking god, so we're gonna take him as the 106? Yeah, I feel like if you like rationalize away everything to this point, you're gonna rationalize away the fact that he doesn't have like a quarterback that can throw all That's too well. Facts. Yeah, you could throw any objections at the Devonta yeah. Smith people and like it, it won't phase them. So we have Smith at 10, Cowboys at 11. Uh, now they trade it up. Oh Justin yeah, Justin Fields. Just oh the Chicago Bears trade up to grab Justin Fields, and uh, this is, I mean, if you're a Bears fan, you're ecstatic. If you're a if, Patriots fan, you if, almost died. Yeah, you literally. On screen. We had someone die on camera. Uh, so this is this is interesting because I feel like Fields is kind of I don't want to say he's like bust proof from a fantasy perspective, but he kind of is. Yeah. He does go to a place where he's got a real number one, so it's not like he's going to a place where, like, if Allen Robinson left, I would be like, fuck, this is really difficult to pick fields anywhere in, like, the first round of a rookie draft. Uh, but he's got the number one to work with, so he can progress from there and then figure it out the next year because A-Rob's definitely going to be gone next year. Yeah. I feel like if you went on Madden and you just had, like, Justin Fields overall and you bumped everything down by, like, 20, you get Mitchell Trubisky. And we saw him do, like, decent, like, three times a year. Does this, uh, does, does this, does the Bears... Drafting Justin Fields. God damn, somebody just Holy got shot. shit, that scared me. Does the Bears drafting Justin Fields concern you about Justin Fields' talent? Just on the fact that, like, it's like Philadelphia with wide receivers, Chicago Bears with quarterbacks? That's what I was saying, because the whole thing is, like, Justin Fields should be the second overall pick. Like, nothing tells you he shouldn't be. Yeah. But then, like, all these scouts are saying, and, like, all these NFL teams are passing on him. But then you, like, look We've at... We've just seen them get it wrong so many times. Yeah, Lamar times. Jackson, but then you also look at Haskins. Like, there's both sides of the spectrum look at, where, like, like... Patrick Mahomes. You look at, like... Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, all these guys falling down, so... Justin Fields going to give you a good, like, 35 to 40 rushing yards, I feel like, on the floor on a game-by-game -game basis. The passing offense there, horrible. But, listen, if he connects, like, they should have had a lot more production there because, what's his face, uh, Darnell Mooney was overthrowing, like, 38 deep passes. Yeah, so I feel like be, every like Sunday night yards. there was just, like, a 1,000 videos of him just getting overthrown by Nick Foles. Yeah, it was like Sunday Night Football. It was just, like, Darnell Mooney highlight clips, basically. Basically, yeah. It was, like, the disappointing highlight clips of Darnell Mooney. So, Justin Fields, so where does he land in the quarterback rankings for you now we got trevor obviously and then what do you do trey lance or justin fields assuming right now, justin fields gets a starting job right from the rip oh if he gets it right off rip that would make it tougher but i also feel like trey lance like jimmy garoppolo's contract is ridiculous i don't see how they keep him around i think i would still go trey lance over justin fields just because like the franchise is better and the weapons are better i feel it's just like a little bit safer yeah i think i'm with you i think i still go trey lance justin fields zach wilson um so the Bears trade up. What does it do for what does it do for A Rob for you? Does it move anything in redraft? I think he's just like he stands pat because yeah. he's played with shit quarterbacks before, and it's like he's just gonna be a guy that you draft in like the fourth or fifth round, and he gives just, you like mainly wide receiver two numbers yeah. every once in a while, a wide receiver one week. Just like a very light, like ninety catches, eleven hundred yards, five touchdowns. Yeah, in the lightest sense possible, which is I don't know how people could put up a light ninety for eleven hundred, but he he continues to do he so does year it every in, year. year. Yeah. All right, so we've got. Him at 11 was the next offensive player, Mac Jones, 15. I think so, because the next receiver was the Giants. What did the Chargers take? They took Rashawn Slater, best tackle in the Rashawn draft. Slater, yeah. So we got DNs, we got offensive linemen, Mac Jones at 15. I kind of hate it for fantasy. Nelson Aguilar and Kendrick Bourne. Nelson Aguilar, Kendrick Bourne. They got Jonu Smith and Hunter Henry. Uh, bro, like, does Mac Jones start immediately? What a weird fucking combo, Cam Newton and uh, Mac Jones. Cam Newton and Mac Jones, yeah. Well, Cam, like all his running this year was like one yard plunges, which is what Mac Jones excels at. So, yeah. I just, um, dude, I don't know. Like, I, I was starting to talk myself into some of the weapons in New England too. I was like, Jonas Smith, kind of wow. nice. I was like, Nelson Aguilar is legitimately the wide receiver one because they have nobody else there. Now it's like Mac Jones don't really throw the ball deep that all. He's kind of good when he throws the ball deep. I think yeah. he's underrated from an accuracy standpoint. If it wasn't like a little, you know, a little foop action going on, we'd like him a little bit more. Uh, it's just hard to be inspired by this offense, just how fucking boring they were last year. And Mac yeah. Jones is like a super boring person. Just like, uh, you know, I mean, the Patriots are boring. They, they, they succeed on boringness, though. Yeah, you know? they stuck to brand. 
But I think like relative to the other quarterbacks, you can't be he can't be higher than five because he doesn't run, and no, everybody else can run. The question becomes, how early do you take him in Superflex rookie drafts? I was thinking about it. I think between him and Bateman, it's going to be very close for me. Uh, yeah, it becomes really hard to take Bateman over him yeah. landing in Baltimore because it's like, okay, straight up positional value, quarterback way over wide receiver, both shitty situations. Mac Jones doesn't really add anything through his legs, but like Bateman fucking... It's on the Ravens. And they're yeah. going to throw like 12 times this year. Yeah, dude, so it's kind of ugly there. So Mac Jones definitely quarterback five of the guys that were picked in the first round. Uh, he'll probably stay in the ADP about where he was, probably like 112 to the 202 range. Yeah. Um, I, th- I don't know. Any, anyone who gets top 15 draft capital, I'm just like probably going to take the plunge on the quarterback, especially if, if I have like one good quarterback, one like quarterback 22 or something. He's yeah, like a Derek starter. Carr, you need somebody else. Yeah, Derek Carr, then I would replace him with the next Derek Carr and Mac Jones. So Do you yeah, think if he went to San Francisco, he would have been higher than that tier of like 112 to 202 or not? Yeah. I think so. I think, uh, I think he would have jumped up to like probably like the 108, 109 range, really? which would have made it interesting because then you're getting five quarterbacks probably off the rip in the first like 10, 11 picks. And that kind of mirrors startup drafts. You do a startup draft now, it's like the first eight of the 12, or eight of the first 12 picks are all quarterbacks. Yeah, you got to get them early, got to get them off, which is why I'm like, so I'm like, we're so bad at evaluating quarterbacks that Mac Jones is like worth the back end of the first round pick, early second round pick there, just because we have no idea what the fuck's yeah. gonna happen. And things change. Like the uh, Patriots might snag another like high profile free agent wide receiver next off season or something. So things change quickly. Fifteen to twenty. Kadarius. Kadarius Tony goes to the New Wild. York Giants and snacks will continue to pretend not that he wants to kill himself. Uh, <laughs> Tony. Tony is a guy who just like. You turn on the highlight clips and he's like fun to watch. Yeah. But if you go past the, if you, if you type in Kadarius Tony's name on YouTube, first thing that will pop up would be highlight clips. If you skip past that and you watch like actual game film, it takes a minute to like find out what he's doing because Kyle Pitts is absolutely dominating in that, uh, in that offense and like took Tony so long to break yeah. out. I mean, he came in as a quarterback. Too. He came in as a quarterback. Then he played like running back and he was like a gadget guy. And last year I looked, 82.4% of his routes came out of the slot. So like, so he, I think the, I think the obvious takeaway from what they're doing here is that they, I mean they gave Golden Tate a big contract three years ago, mm-hmm. didn't work out whatsoever. So they had an idea in mind of exactly what they were doing with Golden Tate, uh, and now they figure Tony could be the next guy because he'll play the slot. He's a good yak guy. He makes moves after the catch. Um, so they had the idea. This seems like a more football fit than a fantasy fit. That's what I'm saying because they have Saquon Barkley out of the backfield, and when you're Daniel Jones they dropping Kevin Galladay, back, they have still have Sterling Shepard, yeah. still have Darius Slayton. Like, but when you're feeling pressure, like, are you gonna throw to? Kadarius Tony three yards on the field, or like Saquon Barkley, like a yard to your left. I feel like he would just dump it off to Saquon Barkley. Yeah, Tony, the Tony pick is fucking terrible. That's just like it's bad scouting. It's bad everything. And like Matt Harmon's reception perception when you send terrible. it to me. Yeah, if you look at like the success he had on different routes, it's so bad. He's just like he's literally just a guy who goes out there and runs. He like doesn't run routes. He just runs. The thing is too, if you watch his highlights, I don't think I've ever seen him catch nine route. It's always just like a little pivot it's route. Never or like routes. A slant. He's just like literally just like running in circles around the middle. Yeah. Of the field. He's like a very good athlete. He's People just don't want to like man him up. But in the league, like that shit's probably not going to work at all. Yeah, he'll he'll have just as many like Sports Center top ten plays as he has like games of ten yards probably. Yeah. Like, Darius Tony, uh, I mean, he's got the capital. Like he was what the fourth wide receiver off the board. Yeah. Fourth wide receiver off the board, so it's like, how far can you let him draft again? Because it's like, we're going to get some shit wrong. Is Tony a good player? I mean, they, he, here's the thing. His ceiling, he can't be the wide receiver one there because Kenny Galladay just signed yeah. a $72 million bag. So I'm it's worried like, if he's even, like, the two. Yeah, Behind, like, Shepard and Ingram, who are going to be in the slot a lot. I'd like, be surprised if Tony plays on, like, 55% of the snaps this year. Yeah, I feel like he's a very, like, Henry Ruggs type of pick. He's, like, end of second round rookie draft pick. That's what I'm feeling. End I of second like, round, and, like, I'm not going to, like, taking him. A lot of the guys who haven't went yet, like,